is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here. Sorry about that little delay there. And welcome to Sunday's edition of the MCU Daily. So everyone acts like the success of the MCU. Uh, Kevin Feige's development of the uh, MCU, the success story that has made the MCU the most successful, long-running kind of a money-making franchise ever is some secret recipe, chicken in a bucket, Coca-Cola situation. Nobody knows the ingredients Coca-Cola put in their drink. It's a big secret. It tastes different to other drinks, doesn't it? Cola drinks. But the MCU hasn't got a secret recipe. Kevin Feige just used common sense and logic to develop this franchise. He focused at first from film to film, but he made sure there was connectivity. So you start with Iron Man, which actually I've just been watching this morning. It's just a self-contained movie. And in the post credit scene, you see Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury. In Iron Man 2, you see a Fury again within the film. But they also introduce Black Widow, a.k.a. Scarlett Johansson. Already the universe is being sewed in. You have Incredible Hulk with a brilliant post credit scene. It's a film that was problematic for a lot of people. But the post credit scene is brilliant because you've got Tony Stark, a.k.a. Robert Downey Jr. at the bar talking to whatever his name is. I forgot his name is, right? Basically, Betty Ross's dad, right? The big soldier, the big colonel, right? And he tells him, we're going to build a team. That's only in the third film. So everything that Fague did in the early stages was all logic and common sense. Because when Marvel Studios was created, there was this idea. It's like the trailer says, there was this idea. So everything's done slowly. There is no rush. They took their time. So what happened was when Warner Brothers were playing catch up, they tried to cheat. They tried to rush that effect because they felt under pressure. Now, what happened was when Disney bought Marvel Studios, because they didn't always own it, Marvel Studios was a creation. Um, and it's when they saw what Kevin Feige was doing, they wanted to buy that up. And what they didn't want to do is swallow it up and control it themselves. They bought it because of Kevin Feige and what he was doing. But Kevin will admit himself, if you talk to Kevin Feige, he will say, we really, really struggled at first. And he'll always defend uh, Warner Brothers and the DCEU because he goes, it's hard to set these things up. But as much of a DCEU fan I am, and as, as a bigger fan I am of Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and all of those films to a point, I mean, you know, I'm a big DC fan, a bigger DC fan than Marvel. You've got to admire what Feige did. He made, he created the most successful IP of all time using logic and common sense. Um, and, and that can't be denied. What my point is here, it staggers me that studios, massive studios worth billions and trillions of dollars haven't done the same thing. We're seeing Universal's Monsters Universe kind of die a death from its inception because what Fake did, he was pretty faithful to the comic book material and he had a relationship with his connections to Marvel Comics. He, he was from Marvel Comics. So you've got this clever dude developing a whole universe, but all he's pretty much doing is saying, right, we're going to make this like a TV show. So every episode is important, but they're all connected. But before Avengers Assemble, the connection was very little. It was only when Avengers Assemble was so successful, they took advantage of that straight away. But I mean, Iron Man 3 that came straight after it was a very divisive film. That's interesting. But because Avengers was so successful, they got away with it. And slowly, I mean, even films like For, For the Dark Universe or whatever it's called, right? Again, a very divisive movie. A lot of people didn't like that, but it made solid money and people shrugged their shoulders and convinced themselves it was a great movie because MCU is great. The Marvel Universe, and this is what happened. Um, the critics kept on giving these films good reviews and they just kept carried on. It was amazing, really. But it all went from 
Kevin Feige making the right decisions. He made the right decisions. He created a universe because I even I'm guilty of calling the MCU a generic universe where you watch a film, you put it down, and it's on to the next one. But it works. It's like Smallville, the show I'm obsessed with. You can find a lot of duds in, 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 that, in that show's history, but it's the interconnectivity of that show that was beautiful. They earned the right in the first three or four seasons to do what they did in the remaining five seasons, which is introduce DC characters. In fact, what Alan Miles did with that show shadows what Fave did with the MCU. Alan Miles introduced Cyborg and Impulse, a.k.a. The Flash. A Green Arrow dominated season six. And all of a sudden, you had this Justice League kind of universe within this pre-Superman story. It was genius. And it wouldn't be surprised me if Fave was inspired by what Alan Miles did in Smallville and took that on. So what he's done, he's built up this universe, which is basically a TV show with a sick Iron Man is the season premiere. Then phase one has its finale. Then phase two has its finale. Then phase three is the big, that's the end of the first three chapters, if you like. So Avengers Infinity War was the series finale. I still don't understand why Ant-Man and the Wasp was after Infinity War and not before. That was a bit of a mistake. Um, but it, it did okay. And this is what I mean. Every TV series has its duds. Every great series that you love, whether it's Alias, 24, Lost, Prison Break, all have their duds. So does the MCU. But like those TV shows, they're so strong. And the fandom are so, you know, the fandom is so built up and love for what Kevin has achieved. No one's walking away because of a couple of duds. And this is what needs to happen with the DCEU. But right now we're talking about the MCU. So this is why the MCU has been so successful, because the actual product and direction is love. Nobody is not going to watch that dud episode, whether it's Captain Marvel, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, 4-2, you know, Iron Man 3. People, but by the time people watch Avengers Assemble, they were going, no, we're on board now. And we're not letting go. This is amazing. This is headed for a great direction. The biggest genius from the beginning was the post credit scenes. Now, people say, well, Kevin Feige didn't invent that. He didn't. But it was part of the interconnectivity. How often do you see everyone getting up when it's time for the credits at the end of the movie? How often now, for any movie, people sit there hoping beyond hope there's a post credit scene, and there isn't. But with the MCU, you do stay there because you're hoping for something. Part of that interconnectivity that will give you a hint. Um, there's been a lot of criticism um, from detractors who say what he's actually done isn't good. But at the end of the day, yes, you, some of you may not like that, that there's a lot of, in a film, in an origin film about one character, about the more outer universe. But for me, it's... For me, it's a good thing. It works. It puts butts in seats. People are interested in watching that episode and moving on. A lot of people won't re-watch uh, these MCU movies. A lot of people will. But it's that TV series and people are interested. So now we kind of get on to Captain Marvel. The truth of the matter is, there's so you've got this civil war full of poison from both sides now. Brie Larson said this. Brie Larson said that. But the truth of the matter is, the true MCU fans, which are the kind of mainstream audience, don't give a shit. People, I think people on both sides of the equation don't particularly have any love for Brie Larson because she does come across a certain way. As I said on Twitter earlier today, she's selling a good message in the wrong way. But I think she's kind of wanted to get, get this reaction to shine a light on diversity and representation. And if that's what she wants to do, that's entirely up to her. I can't tell her what to do. You can't tell her what to do. But she can't damage the MCU. She can't. It's still People don't care what she says. People are going to watch Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel will make money. Whether it's blockbuster record-breaking money or just average Ant-Man money, I don't know. But here's another truth. Captain Marvel is the precursor, the precursor to one of... No, not one of the, the most anticipated comic book movie of all time. Avengers Endgame. Avengers 
four, right? So nobody is going to sit this out. I'm not going to sit this out. Now, normally what I do is I rush to the cinema to watch a DCEU movie and I wait to watch the MCU movies on Blu-ray 4K or I order it on Amazon Digital or whatever I do because my my obsession is DC. I love DC comics. I love the characters. And if there's a DC film in the cinema, I confess, but I have got all the MCU films. I do enjoy them, but they are chapter-based. It is like a TV series. And this is how Fake Kevin Fake has invested people into this universe and it works. I don't even think it really matters if critics were to give them good write-ups or bad write-ups. But every film seems to get a good write-up. So what's the typical review for an MCU movie? Wow, it was this was a fun movie. This was a fun time in the cinema. This is where we are now. That's all people expect from their cinema now. It's not like back, back in 92 when we watched uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Chaplin. And we were, you know, oozing about this young actor's potential. You know, films like that don't really sell anymore. You know, things have, it's over 20 years since the 90s, right? Right? And films were different back then. You have films like Titanic. You know, you still, ha I mean, you still, you know, you, you, act, you know, you just had explosive, explosive action flicks that were doing well. But I think from the moment that um, Singer's X-Men was successful, um, the kind of, it changed. The culture of film changed. The audiences of film changed. And now, uh, what's dominating the cinema, of course, which is what we know, is comic book movies. They're the ones who make the biggest money. Even Star Wars have, I mean, Disney have found it really hard with Star Wars. I mean, The Last Jedi, I mean, it's not worth getting into, but that film really broke that fandom in two. I don't, I just don't believe that Captain Marvel is going to break this fandom in two. I hope not, because it will just be a sad way to end. Especially, I can't see it because everyone's excited about Avengers Endgame. Um, we can kind of talk about why it's called Endgame. Um, there could be a school of thought because this is the end of Thanos' story or that this is the end of this free chapter based kind of story. So phase one, phase two, phase three, we're heading for phase four. I am right. I'm sure diehard MCU fans and Marvel fans can correct me if I'm wrong. We're heading to phase four. And the phases just basically mean seasons. So basically, phase one was one season, phase two was one. Phase three is the climactic end of this whole story. So everything about the Infinity Gems ends with end game. This is the end of this story. So you'd assume with the Fox Disney deal going through really very soon that the, 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 um. I forgot what they were called now, but basically they'll be looking to introduce the Fox kind of um, characters, if you like. So um, definitely the X-Men characters. And I can't believe I forgot the, uh, the other franchise, which will come along with this as well. Uh, but it's all it's all going to it's all going to be there as well. So it's very interesting and very exciting because now Kevin Feige has got these new toys to play with, hasn't he? So it's, it's, go it's going to be very, very, very interesting, as I said the other day, how he actually deals with these new toys that he's got and how he implements them in his existing universe. But it, it, is, it is very, very, very exciting to see what happens in the next phase. Um, but I think in terms of Captain Marvel and Brie Larson, uh, the MCU is is too bulletproof for anything she says to affect um, what happens in the success of these movies, in the box office of these movies. But I, I think they will have to look at it. I think Disney have misjudged the situation. I think along with her casting, which there's nothing they can do about now. She's Captain Marvel. She's spoken a lot of things. Um, as I say, good messages sold in the wrong way. Um, so it's going to be very interesting how they... They'll look, like all studios, they will look at what happens in the box office. Now, with with the tracking, it's obvious in America, Captain Marvel is going to do very, very well. Now, I don't know if it's going to be released globally separately. I don't know how this works because pundits and scoopers are not very clear about box office when they talk. They just say, oh, this film's made that much money, but they don't really explain if it's domestically because... 
For a lot of these pundits, they think domestically is bigger than global. But it's not. It's changed now. I mean, with what Warner Brothers did by releasing Aquaman in China first, then globally, then America, shows you that. But they know there's a lot more money to be made by treating the global audience more importantly than the domestic audience. America is a very big country. But it isn't bigger than the whole world. It's a big country. It covers a lot of the map. But it isn't bigger than every country in the whole world. So there's a lot of money to be made from America, but there's a lot more potential and money um, by, to be made by the global audience, which is very, very important. So I am looking forward to seeing the theatrical version of Captain Marvel. And um, it's look, the MCU is very successful. And no matter what we say about it, um, it, it was successful because Kevin Feige, let me say that again, because Kevin Feige did the right things. It was just logic and common sense. That's how he did it. That's how he achieved it. And the reason Warner Brothers struggled with the DCEU is because they wanted to rush to make MC, MCU money. But if they looked at the MCU and how they took their time, and if they didn't put pressure on they, their creatives, you know, the DCEU would be as successful with the mainstream audience right now. But they tried to cut corners. And we saw the catastrophe, the consequences of that with the Justice League film, where they tried to make it an MCU film. But, you know, the MCU earned the right to get where it was. Um, you can't cut corners. And now Walter Hamada has come in and he's making the right decisions. And, you know, the DCEU will be... A, you know, universes within a universe, which is very exciting for fans like me. So I think both universes can coexist together. I think we're very lucky. This is the era of the comic book movie. A lot of people envy that. A lot of people hate that. But us as geeks and nerds, of course, are very excited and pumped by that. And you know what? The future is bright. If you love comic books, and I do.